tried to get this thing running back six or eight months ago. In May and June of 2023. <laughs> and the motor was just about stuck. It would turn, but it was, it wouldn't spin fast enough to start. I didn't have a bunch of random parts we needed to put it together because it was so stripped apart. The steering rack was froze, so even if we got it running, we couldn't move it around. And we've since then corrected all those issues and got more parts. So this is why we decided it would be a good installment for Just Make It Run January. And also it's a good motivating factor because now we can decide what we want to do with a car going forward now that we know that the motor runs. Uh, also, you'll see half of this video is very subpar quality compared to what we've got now with our videos and audio because We've now got another GoPro that's upgraded and our audio and lighting has got better. So all that stuff that you see the first half of the video was back in May and June of 2023 when we didn't have all that. But since then we've, we've got some upgrades and it's made the video quality better. So that's, you'll see that in the second half of the video that there's just a, a difference there. So that's why that is. And we just didn't want to release the footage until we had it running um, pretty much. We didn't want to do a half a video and kind of a holding you on to see, oh, what are they going to do with it? Because it was like a couple of different like months later. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. So I had surgery yesterday. Um, I found out that I had skin cancer and they removed a big part of the mole and surrounding area on my back lymph nodes from under my arm but they said to not make any important decisions within 24 hours of being under anesthesia so what are we doing we're making very important decisions before the 24 hour period is up <laughs> we're on our way to go look at a 1977 amc pacer AMC Pacer X. It's currently covered in poison ivy, poison oak, whatever the leaves of three let them be plant is. go into a little bit more detail of why I had to have a mole removed. Hopefully by sharing my story, maybe it can help others as well. Because if I would have had any idea that this was this serious, I would have dealt with this much earlier instead of waiting. So I've had this mole on my back ever since I was younger. I never really thought much about it because it had been there since I was real little and my mom also had it. So I just thought it was a genetic mole. But I noticed that over a course of several months within the past year, it was, it was growing, it was becoming uneven, and it looked like a volcano. And then it started becoming itchy. It was becoming pretty annoying because it kept getting scratched on stuff and I kept hitting it. And I just wanted it gone. So I went in to get it checked out. April the 12th, I had an appointment with a dermatologist. They shaved the mole. I switched doctors from Athens to Gainesville. May 1st, I figured out that I had a melanoma, and they scheduled me for lymphocentigraphy. That was May the 10th, and they insert radiation dye into you. Just finished up with the actual day one of stuff. They had two different scans. One was a lymph node scan, and one was a CT scan. We finished up with both of those, and it didn't take four to six hours. It took an hour and 21 minutes, so we're thankful for that. But May 17th, I found out I had a lymph node that showed positive, and they scheduled surgery for removal of the lymph node in the area around the mole. I went back May the 22nd for pre-op with surgery set for May the 23rd, bright and early at 7 o'clock in the morning. Today is the day. 
unfortunately. I had to be at the hospital at 7 a.m. They didn't get started until 1 p.m. They had to do another lymphocentigraphy in the morning, and now I'm out of surgery and waiting test results. This is where this car comes into play. I saw this pacer on Marketplace before my surgery, and Daniel's like, if it's still there after your surgery, we'll go get it if you fill up, up to it. So the day after my surgery, I said, I fill up to it. Let's go get it. I wanted a distraction while we were waiting on the test results just to keep my mind off of it and have something to do. So we decided to go get this car. After the surgery in May, I had a PET scan at the end of the July. The test results came back as no abnormal activity seen. Hopefully it continues to stay that way. We bought this car from the guy that runs Oconee Trim Shop, and he was gutting this car to use it on a pole for a sign out front of his business, and lost interest stopped. I don't know why. But we were not aware when we bought it that the steering rack was seized and that the front subframe was not bolted in the car. So when I hooked to the subframe and started pulling it, bad things happened, and I had to rehook back on the body. It was a royal pain to get this thing on the trailer. It doesn't look quite as bad like on camera, but it was pretty tragic. And all of the vegetation around the car is poison oak, I think. Poison? It's not poison ivy, it's poison oak. Whatever it is, it's not pleasant. So, we finally got the thing loaded, but had we known what we were dealing with, we probably wouldn't have bought this one. I just wanted to add to that, it was daylight when we went and saw this car, and it was dark by the time that we finally got out of there. So over an hour load time to get this on there. Now that this thing is out of the weeds, let's take a closer look at it. The longest door ever. So apparently they made this door three, two or three inches longer than the driver's side door to allow access for the passengers to get in the back. I mean, just look at this thing. Look at how long it is. It just keeps going. It's also very interesting. We have a bench seat. Apparently these came in buckets and benches, but this one has a bench. It's kind of quirky for a small economy car. The floorboard is on its way out. Let's see what's in the glove box. Okay, well I can't get to open that. It's pulling too much on my back. Looks like some hardware in here. There is a key! There's no instrument cluster. Dash, some of that's missing. The headliner is there. Looks like some more floorboards trying to get out of there. Oh, there's a kick panel, door seal plate. Looks like we got some door panels. The back seat's there. go to the other side and see what we can see. There is some rust in the corner right there and a little back there. Some more rust along the edges of where the tire bracket goes. there. Okay, I can't get that one open right this second. So now that Daniel's here, he can uh, open up this thing and we can really actually check out what's going on in here. The cluster is missing, which is problematic. I'm hoping it's in here somewhere, but I haven't seen it yet floors don't exist. This seat doesn't lift up. It does. It's just latched. 
Dang, it's stuck. The back is full of parts. Oh, you can open the hood and show them under the hood. Yeah, I hadn't did that yet. The door, like around the door area, is. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. Too bad. Yeah, we put some floors in there. What I meant to say is put some sheet metal in it. That'll be funny. Show us your secrets. Under the hood. Pretty sure that's a 4.2. The radiator's missing, which is going to be problematic. Haven't looked at the engine at all. Don't know if it's stuck. Don't know anything about it. Can you hold this hood up? I was gonna grab the front crank bully and see if I can move it at all. Don't know how stuck it is. It, it'll wiggle. I think with some oil in the cylinders, it'll free up. Does the back catch open? Yeah, the back opens. It is sexy rear end. Aw, you can tell I busted. Yeah, we need a parts car. Oh, the trim around the trunk is... Yeah, let's get uh, some rest here. There are three power steering pumps. I'm not sure if this car even has power steering. But there's three pumps. This? Yeah. One, and there. Two. And I saw oh there. That's a third one. Look at that snake skin. It's gonna get you. Hopefully the critter is not still in there. The door panels are here, which is a win. There's a fan. A master cylinder. The cover is up there. Oh look, another breather. 14 radiator hoses. Flex fan. A flex fan and a snowman. So I still know. Oh, I saw the hubcaps or some of the center caps. They're up there. Oh, that's look, good. they're around that. I saw them from the side. Somewhere. Okay. It's fantastic. I hadn't found the other thing. There's some exhaust in there. I still hadn't seen the cluster. I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. Well, we'll be getting all this stuff out and going through all of it more thoroughly, but this is just a quick rundown. in the gas tank with my light. Oh. Eh, I've seen worse. The fuel door is missing. The passenger door is longer than the driver's door on the pacer. Fun fact. I went into that already. Oh. There's the seal plate. Front sway bars in there. Looks like hardware. Yeah, it's hardware. The body tag. Advanced unit construction. What's the paper? I also tried to open the glove box but get it. It was stuck or locked. Give me your secret or show me your secrets. Paper clip. That would be North Carolina license number, registration, inspection. So everything worked in 1998. 
$9.25 to have it inspected. Oh, there's, is that the mileage right here? This is the mileage. Oh, that's what 99,000, whatever. Jeez. Oh, that's just the inspection stuff. You want to take the key and see if the dash will open? Sure. I feel like it should have a round key for the dash. I feel like this is just an ignition key. Absolutely nothing in the dash, so. Yeah, I tried to peek at it, and that's it, pretty much what I'd like to know. I'm just glad we have a key. We don't ever get keys. gonna attempt to bolt the subframe back in the pacer and see if the motor will turn over. Right now I'm looking for subframe bolts. And we're about to have a yard sale. I'm gonna pull this stuff over here. Yeah. Let's figure out what does it go with this car. We can just put it in the scrap pile. Rusty tailpipe, scrap. That was really lightweight. That they put them like deep down in there. Yeah. There's the astronaut cluster. Multiple radios, scrap pile. Jeff likes these. <laughs> Why is it missing? Where's the front of it? I don't know. This is trash. What is it? No. Oh, that's extra trim for the side. Are we missing these? Probably. No? There's a whole box of 8-track tapes. Aww. Do we have an 8-track one? This oh, car may have ones? had one in it, apparently. Yeah, there's the cluster. There's the front of that radio. Oh. That's hot garbage. Just throw that away. <laughs> there's the headlight switch and all that junk. Oh, wow. They saved it by doing that then. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What kind of A-track tape is this? I don't know. This is heavy. Okay. There we go. I've got both of the subframe bolts in. At least now it's good on the Can you hold this hood up for a second? Oh, the motor is sitting on the steering rack. That's what the major problem is. So there's no motor mounts? No, they're not. Bolts ain't the real motor. So jack the motor up and fix that, and then we're going to move this car. That doesn't move the wheel at all. Yeah, I know. It doesn't turn at all. I almost wonder if whoever started taking it apart bent the steering rack when they dropped the motor on it. Oh. Dang, whoever cleaned this did a crappy job. 
didn't even get under the hood. I pulled the motor mount out. I was gonna bolt the motor back in, but this mount has uh, not a whole lot of mount left. So, I'm going to make a solid mount and just weld some plates over here and drill a hole through them. But they don't make new motor mounts for an AMC Pacer. They do in my shop. Got them took care of. Well, I got the plugs out of this thing, and they really don't look that bad. The one on the end there is a little sketch. I'm sorry about this lighting, but it's terrible. They're not that bad. But either way, we're going to put some penetrating oil in these cylinders. Just to uh, hopefully make the rings not be super stuck. We're gonna put a wrench on this thing and see if it'll turn over and see if we uh, have a motor to work with. Oh, oh, yeah. Will it go all the way? Oh, it's got a tight spot. We rock her back and forth a little bit. Yeah, it's got a little rust ridge in one cylinder, but we'll get her past that. trick to these things is to just keep going they'll turn a little further each time and, and you can get them all the way over we usually just use the starter for this but this one don't have a starter this is actually probably a better method it's about to roll on over yep there it is yep Okay, we have an engine now. That thought us not at all. I like the way it looks though. Yeah. When you first saw those wheels, you were so against those wheels, you were like, these wheels are hideous. <laughs> well, they seem to work on this. All right, so we went from the Pacer X wheel. We only had three of these and we didn't want to buy another one on eBay because budget build. So then we went to the Mustang wheel, generation 05 to 09. It was okay, but these needed the paint removed. They've been rattle camped by a hillbilly. So then we went to whatever these off name brand things are. Then we forgot we had. And then here's our pet bird. Still no baby birdies yet. Well, we've been trying to get the steering rack freed up. It is stuck. I got the column bolted back in, but the steering rack will not turn. It is stuck right where it is. So I'm gonna try to get this engine to run and then put a power steering pump back on it and put some pressure through the rack and see if that helps. I put penetrating oil in it. It's probably broken. It's probably something in it broke, but we're gonna give her a shot. So we're gonna clean up under the hood. We're gonna put our new HEI distributor in. See if we can get this thing to run. Here 
just for fun. Here's the temperature in the shop currently. That's cool compared to what it's been the past few days. But this heater box is not actually installed, but it's broke. So uh, we're going to continue removing it. That's because paper. race pacer. Because all this is hot garbage and I want to clean it all up. It does, however, have a spider. Ew. And a cable hook. So I gotta get this cable off. I don't really want to cut that in case I decide to put this back. what you're working on. Get a starter and a wire. Long wire. Make sure this works before I go to the trouble of bolting it in. Make sure our wire is good too. burning on the back of this. I don't know. It creates a spark every time that it flames up. Whatever this is, it's not supposed to have continuity with the back and it's touching the back. I can get it to not touch so it doesn't make art. There we go. I'm going to cram some silicone around that so it can't touch again. It had a little rubber thing right here around it, but it's missing, and that's what all was blowing fire. I'm just gonna pack it full of silicone, I guess. This is big on the starter. That's a Ford starter. That's the motorcraft style. Like, like, literally all the Fords we have sitting around here. Well, we're gonna put us some silicone around this here, whatever this is that's not supposed to make contact to shield it from making contact. Okay, beautiful. Is that perfect? No. But will it do what that little rubber strap did? Yes. It's okay, I only knocked a little bit of dirt in here. Does it have oil in it? I never even pulled the dipstick. Oh, look at there, it's full. A brand new HEI distributor. It's 
the best thing the uh, Chinese ever did was give us cheap HES. I'm going to point this one back where the other one was. And then I'm going to put number one back where the cap would have been from the, or where it would have been on the cap from the factory and see if that's right. Probably won't be. Put the starter on first and then get number one on top dead center and then point it towards where we want number one to be. The old pump drive shaft. At that point. I found the starter in the back of this thing and bolted it on. Found the cable. So I'm going to bump the starter until I get some compression on number one and then finish rolling it over by hand until I get it all the way on top dead center. So I can put this distributor in. Finger here and bump it. Oh, there we go. Got the little rush of air. We will finish it with... We're going to try to stop A screwdriver in the hole. And this. Yep, that right there is TGC. Okay. According to the diagram, the rotor button should point directly away from the engine for number one. So that's where I'm going to put it. This is not how I gasket. I'll do it for See if I have a gasket in the box. I got it right there. To back up the oil pump drive shaft. Oh, good work. I'm slightly annoyed about the fact that this sits all the way down in the drive shaft and there's a gap. I have a sneaking suspicion. This is manufactured just slightly wrong. But I believe we're just going to leave it alone.
This was back in the summer, and we got a distributor off the Summit Scratch and Dent for this thing. And we didn't have a car, we didn't have plug wires, we didn't have a solenoid, we didn't have battery cables, we didn't have a whole lot of stuff, and we also didn't have a whole lot of money at the time. So outside it went, and we came back to it in January for Just Make It Run January. Number one ended up being about right here, that's fine. Yeah, number one. It's not exactly where it's supposed to be. It is here, but that'll be fine. We finally caught back up to where we are now. This is January 2024. It's gloomy and sloppy and raining, and there might be some water in the intake. That'll be okay. We're about to put the solenoid switch on this and the battery cables and see if she'll spin over. And right as I came out here to do this, it started raining again. I'm trying to mount this real quick before the bottom falls out of this. Just so I can have one thing done. We've returned back to the pacer, and our goal is to get the battery terminals changed out so that we can stick a battery in there and then see what happens. I think that is a hot wire. Oh, I guess it also needs plugs and wires. As well. Yeah. All of this goes over here for the alternator and whatnot. All right, we got two of these little jokers. I don't know which one of these goes where. We're gonna put them just like this, like they're laying, and give it a whirl. I feel like there should be another wire that has to be hot to make this work too, but We'll cross that bridge in a minute also. Alright, let me go get a battery. We're gonna stick a battery in it and see if it spins with the starter. I feel like this is a wire that needs to be hot to make the thing run. Yeah, that ties into. get a jumper wire off the race car and see if I can make that. So we got our solenoid switch wired. There is a wire here that won't reach so I'm using jumper wires but it's wired. We're gonna bump the key and see if it spins over. <laughs> Where's all the rust coming from? I somewhere underneath there. Oh it came out of the exhaust. Okay. So my penetrating oil I put in here did seem to do something because this was stuck. Yeah, it looks like it's turning full. It's full turning fine. Circles. We're going to get some more penetrating oil and put in the cylinders. And then we're going to put plugs and wires in it and see if she'll go. So I've put this penetrating oil in this thing once before. We're going to do it again because it sounds real squeaky, but it's free now. So the penetrating oil will work. We're just going to put some in each cylinder because I don't want it to dry start. Feeding the machine. Oh, this is a machine, that's for sure. <laughs> I need to get this on top dead center and make sure the rotor button's pointing the right way. Okay. Will you go bump it and let me put my finger in the hole. Ooh, the shadows are rough, you guys. Yeah. Well, that was a lot. What? Less. Actually, that's probably good. It was still coming up. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're some point near the water. So I need to go again? Or no, that? you're good. That's it right there. Alright, so let me go grab the pluggers. The back one. Are they all tight? Oh, you mean? I'm gonna go see if I had a car a little bit this. Just because that would make my life easier if I did. Plus, she finished that. There we go. for the spark plug wires now these came off the race car and they're a mixture of ford and chevy wires but we know they work because the race car works daniel has requested that we pull the dipstick it is way back here by That's the number six pull the other one. Oh, okay just kidding incorrect one the other one is right here i would have actually looked to see where it went oh yeah look at that all it's got plenty Should we check the transom? You can. Let's see what we got. Uh, looks like an ooey gooey mess. You. We have a motor and a transmission for this, so if either one of them wind up being bad, I'm really not that concerned with it. Oops. That's back on, that's back on. You've almost got the car radio bolted back on. Car bar. Oh. Yeah. I don't know anything about this car. I don't know if it'll run or not. Honestly, I'm probably just going to pour some gas down it and see what happens. I don't know that I care to, like, try to run gas through it currently. Yeah, like... Very little having this bolted on. I don't know why on earth it needs fine thread bolts. Or why it needs to be this. Where did you find this? My shelf in the shop. It's actually like, I mean, everything like opens smoothly. It's in better shape than a lot of the carbs that I've drug out to like <laughs> stick on stuff. This is not true fuel. This is some gas with some oil poured in it because it's what I had. But it does have some oil in it. Um, what I need to do now...
All right, we are spinning it for the first time. And we lost connection on our negative post. It sounded like the timing was a little high on one hole or the other. So we're gonna give that a shot. Going again. Will you make connection? I think it's 180 out. Just because I see it, I keep seeing it pop out both ends. Let me swap these. Actually, I'm going to go this way real quick and just try it in a different position. And see what that does. Just, just to be sure. No, I'm pretty sure it's my idea. Tripping over the pacer over there? Yes. Alright, so if it's 180 out, that means I need to move them 180. Oh, you put a car body. I did. Uh. So you're saying that my wires are wrong? I'm saying that number one's in the wrong place. What's the firing order on this? Uh, I already forgot. Let me look it up. And this is one five. Where'd you put number one? Here? No. That oh. one. If you put it here? I put number one as that one. Oh, well, that was the problem, probably. <laughs> what do you number, mean? Number one was over here. Well, that's what it shows in the thing. I know, but I... Hold on. Go switch by clockwise. Three, six. Uh, three, six, two, four. Yeah. Let's give that a whirl. Yeah, let's do it. Go again. Let's give her more time. Yeah. <laughs> give that a whirl there. She gonna go. All right. It's flooded. Just keep going. It's flooded. Go again. I'm out of ether, I think. sitting in that intake and when it rolls over hard it pulls it in there and floods it nice <laughs> trying to decide what i want to do at this point even the steering lock on the thing works yeah awesome i'm real tempted to buy a new set of plugs all right we got a fresh battery now i'm gonna try choking it and see if it'll pull fuel from the carb if it won't i have brake clean
touch of time in it. That was too much. I heard it kick back. Yeah. So maybe I had the timing in the right place. Yeah, I don't like it. Let's try it back. This car is in gear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it says it's in neutral, but it's not. Yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm not prepared for an emergency bailout in this position. <laughs> All right, we're gonna leave this here so it holds it just a little open. We had it too far open. Actually, we may just try to. Now that it ran, we may try to keep it running with the car. But I don't think this car works at all. <laughs> You go there with that. Now maybe we can keep it running. What? It's in park, it's just getting on the, I think it's getting on the, uh, whatever it is, on the converter or something. I think it's in park, I think it's just trying to push the car forward. <laughs> We either got a real big vacuum leak somewhere. Oh, I think that's a vacuum leak, I bet. We go one more time. If I can find the other end of my wire, there it is. somewhere a big one but I just don't see it how do you know that because it's the throttle blades aren't open but it's trying to take off so what's oh yeah here it is the EGR valves not on it so it's got a big vacuum leak on the EGR valve hole you want to show that or... yeah the EGR valves not installed down there I don't know if y'all can see that or not but that's our vacuum leak so yay the car might work if it had actual like vacuum. So we need to block that off and then try again. But the motor runs, we've proven the concept. That's all I wanted to see is the motor run. So we're gonna build this car at this point, I think. So what is preventing this car from like moving? I mean, it's trying to move itself, I need to but... get all of that straightened out and then I don't have brakes or a radiator. Okay. So we fixed the steering issue? The steering's fixed, yeah. It has, it will steer back and forth. And we assume that the transmission is... The transmission pulls forward. Operable? Yeah. Yeah, the transmission pulls forward at least because it's trying to run over my IV bottle stand. So this is another one that we can build. We need to order some parts at this point. So I always ask, what do y'all want to see me do with this one? Ugly yellow pacer. Do we just get the parts we're missing and make it run and drive or do we engine swap it if so what 
Do we stick shift swap it? Because that would be much cooler than the crusty automatic. Let me know in the comments. As always, we thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you on the next one.